We started off with Euler's method. In Rangakutta, we said we could improve the accuracy by adding stages at each time step. That means additional evaluations of f. Now we're going to try a different way of improving the accuracy. We'll use some of the history of the solution. This is called a multi-step method. For example, we could say ui plus 1 is ui plus a combination of f at time i and f at time i minus 1. This looks like two evaluations of f, but if we're smart, this evaluation of f could have been stored during the previous time step and so we don't have to recompute it. Some notation here to make things easier. F sub j means f at time tj and value uj. With that notation, a general multi-step formula looks like this. ui plus 1 is a combination of ui and on back to ui minus k plus 1. k is some positive integer. Plus h times a combination of f values at those same time levels. We have to start this formula at i equals k minus 1 so that we don't get any negative time indices. Those wouldn't make any sense. And we call this a k-step method. In order to do that first step with i equals k minus 1, we would have references to u0, u1, and so on up to uk minus 1. So we need these starting values to get going. u0 comes from the initial conditions. These others usually come from a Runge-Kutta formula. Once you've got those, then you use the multi-step formula the rest of the way. There is an important distinction between different multi-step methods. If this leading bk constant is equal to zero, we say the method is explicit. If it's non-zero, we say it's implicit. This matters because ui plus 1 is actually hiding in two places in an implicit method. For example, if we look at the easiest implicit method, which is called backward Euler, it looks a lot like the Euler method, but we have an index i plus 1 instead of i on the f. This is a one-step method, and we can write out what all the constants are for it in the general formula. But if we say what exactly this fi plus 1 means, then we see that ui plus 1, which is the thing we're trying to find at this time step, appears in two places. So to find it, we now have to solve this equation, which, depending on f, is probably a nonlinear equation. If u is a vector, then it's actually a system of equations. Let me describe two important families of multi-step methods, though there are others. We have the Adams-Bashforth method, or family of methods. These all have a k minus 1 equal to 1, and all the other a's are equal to 0. And these are explicit methods, so b k is also 0. You get one of these for every value of k. And then a close relative are the adams moulton formulas. They have the same patterns in the A constants, but these are implicit methods, and so the BK is non-zero. Here again is our general multi-step formula. It's quite cumbersome to write out every single time, so we do have a shorthand. They're called the generating polynomials of the method. We use the a constants to define a polynomial rho of z. And 
and we use the b constants in the formula to define another polynomial, sigma of z. So if we know rho and sigma, then we know all these constants, and then we can write out the full method. For instance, going back to the backward Euler method, which is actually the Adams-Moulton method of order one, rho of z is z minus one, and sigma of z is just z. The other method, the first method that I wrote out, is actually the Adams-Bashworth method of order two. That has rho equal to z squared minus z, and sigma equal to three halves z minus a half. So for every method, there are some simple properties. The degree of the rho polynomial is equal to k, which is the number of steps. The degree of sigma is also equal to k if the method is implicit, and it's less than that if the method is explicit. Another shorthand for describing these methods is called the stencil. It leaves out the constants and just shows the positions of things in time. So we have one column of u values and another column of f values. Time is increasing in the columns. So for an Adams-Bashworth method, we would use just two different values of u, and then we would use values of f starting at time ti and going back. In an Adams-Moulton method, we use the same two u values, but now we also use the f value at time i plus one. The empty symbols here represent things that are unknown when we're trying to find a new time step. We can define truncation error for multi-step methods much the same as we did for Runge-Kutta. You plug in the exact solution u hat, take the difference of the two sides of the formula, and divide everything by h. So we can write this out in its full glory. And then the idea, as the Mrungakata, is to expand all this around time ti and look for the leading power of h. For example, let's look at the Adams-Moulton method of order two. This is known as the trapezoid formula. It has rho equal to z minus one. That's a typo on the slide. It should say z minus one and sigma is equal to one-half z plus one-half. So we can write out what tau is for this method. And the trick here is to get rid of these f's by using the fact that u hat solves the differential equation. So the derivative of u hat is equal to f, so we'll replace the f's by u hat primes. If we expand everything in the first term around time ti, we get this mess. And then inside the brackets, we replace the f's. But now this u hat i plus one has to be expanded around time ti as well. So we apply Taylor's theorem again. So now if we look at this first term, the u hat i's cancel out. 
Everything else is divided by H. And in the second term, you had I primes combine. Everything else hangs around. Finally, we see a bunch of stuff cancels out. And tau starts with constant times h squared times u hat triple prime. What we really care about here is that the leading power of h is h squared, so we call this a second order accurate method. Finally, let me say something about how these multi-step methods can be derived. It's a familiar pattern. We interpolate some data by a polynomial to represent a function that we don't know exactly, and then we do an operation on the interpolant in place of that function. One way we might use this, for example, is to interpolate the values of u, ui plus 1, ui going on back, by a polynomial p of t. And then we will set p prime at ti plus 1 equal to f at time i plus 1, which is what the exact solution would satisfy. When you work this out, the resulting method is called a backward differentiation or a backward difference method. Another alternative is to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. You can write the difference of u hat values as the integral of its derivative, but the derivative of u hat is f. We don't know u hat at all times, so we don't know f at all times, but we know some values for f, so we'll replace this integrand by a polynomial interpolant of those values and integrate that. When you work that out, you get an Adams-Bashworth method, and so on.